I'm gonna get demonetized for this. I'm not even monetized, I don't know why I care, but how are you guys enjoying The Mandalorian? I'm enjoying it quite well. Howdy and welcome back to another Focus Friday. Man, it's been a long time since I actually sat down and did one of these, and I feel like I say that all the time. But I hope you all enjoyed the last two episodes, which were Autumn and Golden. And if you haven't noticed by the Golden video, I did get a GoPro Hero 9. I haven't had a GoPro in a long time in a long time since like the Hero 4. So it's been about five iterations since then and I figured that, you know, it's time for an upgrade. So I sold, well, I actually sold my Hero 4 to get my Lumix G7 and it's just been a long time since I had an action cam. I was originally going to do an unboxing, but uh, if you haven't seen by the box, I kind of opened it already. <laughs> so it, it's not gonna exactly make for a great unboxing, but I might make a video about what I bought with it because this is not, I bought a bunch of accessories. That's what I'm trying to say. I do want to inform all of you that I am working on a, what I deem a pretty big project. It's not that Montana bison range project that I mentioned in my quarantine video when I first started to do this on a serious basis. It's not that big, but I do think that it's a very it's an intensive project and I've been working on it. I won't be able to do it until next summer actually, but it's in its planning and development stage. I'm kind of putting all the pieces together to see what kind of picture that I can make. So that's not actually what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about what I want to see in the next Lumix GH iteration, uh, which is rumored to be the GH6. Right now I am recording on the GH5 with the 14 to 42 millimeter. I still have my Sigma. I still have my other 25 Lumix Panasonic uh, native lens. Anyways, I digress. Today I do want to talk about some features I want to see in the new GH6. So without further delay, one of the first things I want to see out of the GH6 is the micro four third sensors. A micro four thirds sensor, while not full frame, I do think that is perfect for kind of, you know, your big, I don't want to say beginner because you make, you make it what it is. You know, if you, I've seen professionals use GH5s, uh, most people are switching to the newer full frame, you know, Sony and Canon, uh, the R5 and the A7S III. And you know, if you're for full frame, you do your full frame thing. If you do your micro four thirds thing, you do that. But I think for beginners, although low light's not exactly great on it, you can still do astrophotography. The micro four third mounts are very versatile in everything that they do. So I have no complaints about my G7 or my GH5, which both have micro four third sensors. The only thing that I would really complain about is the crop factor that the sensors have. And it's like a, a what, a one point, five to nine crop it's it's pretty bad but you can still get some great images out of it so there's nothing too much to complain about so something else that i would like to see in the future gh entry would be 6k at 24 and 30 uh fps now the gh5 actually does have that it's an anamorphic setting and i've actually let's see if i can link it up at the top of the description uh, what, whatever part of the screen it ends up on. Uh, the GH5 can actually shoot at 6K. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty impressive coming from a uh, four-third sensor and a miniature DSL body. I mean, it, it's pretty amazing what some of these other cameras are going for now. I mean, 8K, 12K. I think that 6K is not overkill, but I think that it's starting to get into that place. Like. When are you ever gonna shoot 8K unless you're shooting for really, really big clients? I'm not shooting for really, really big clients. I'm shooting for myself. And among those other FPS options, I still like 4K. 4K is great. It's your, it, it took over 1080p as the basis, you know, the base frame rate for what you sh 
sh what I think you should be shooting in if you're shooting video. As I was saying, 4K is the basis of what I think that you should be shooting at and how I wish the GH6 would expand upon that would offer 4K in the higher frame rates such as 50, 75, 120, 240 and I hope that they can somehow jam it in there with all the other frame rates. The GH5 does have a variety of frame rates which I'm very happy for because I use 24, 30, 60 and then I do use, oh what is it, I think it's the 120 variable frame rate that you can shoot in 1080p. But 1080p is kind of becoming a little bit extinct. It's not unusable. I've used it in one of my cinematic videos. I think it's the entry number one for the cinematic journal that I used uh, 120 for the variable frame rate. It works well, you can color grade it, you can do everything as long as you shoot in V-Log. Not too many complaints about the GH5 and hopefully they can keep building a better camera. The GH5 stabilization is good. Uh, I wish it would be beefed up just a little bit more. I can st I do a lot of handheld shooting and it's, you know, I'm running gun. That's most of my projects. Actually, that's all my projects. The point being, stabilization, always a nice thing. 4K, higher frame rates, always a nice thing. And so the biggest thing that I hope that the GH6 expands upon is the autofocus. The contrast-based autofocus on the Lumix Panasonic cameras are not good. It's usable, and right now I'm using the, um, the one area square box, and I just kind of have it from here to here, and Hopefully I'm in focus because I noticed my last two focus Fridays were not in focus Kind of defeats the purpose of the name, but and for video It's just it's it's a pain because you don't have um, what the other cameras do is a phase detection autofocus uh, Which is Sony and Canon and I really really love that it works great I have previously used one of the Sony's uh, cameras that has the uh, phase detection autofocus it just, it's so buttery. It works really great. I'm very fearful of the Panasonic line of cameras because it's just, you don't know if it's in focus or not. And one of the reasons why I did get the GoPro Hero 9 is because of the autofocus. It's always in focus. You can, I mean, I think there's a limit to how close it is, but it's just always in focus. And that way, when I get the, this video is gonna turn into a GoPro Hero 9 unboxing unintentionally. So you put the, the GoPro on the floaty stick. It's supposed to be for water, but I used it for, you know, the selfie mode, uh, just to get a little bit of extra stabilization. The reason why I bought this is because of the big project next year, and I do wanna be in focus for a lot. I still want the cinematic shots, and with my last video, um, Golden, you can shoot cinematic video with it, but it's not, you can't beat a, a mirrorless camera or a DSLR. You just can't beat those for cinematic video. The autofocus for vlogging is just something you need to knit. Okay, I just, I can snap, I swear. Okay, I just failed snapping four times. You know, I feel that I am probably gonna give a, a GoPro Hero 9 review when I have more experience using it. I don't have too much experience using it. Look, it's Pennsylvania. It's cold. I, I'm i gonna try to go out more often. It's gonna take a while. So that's just my opinion on features that the GH6 should have. There are features that I would appreciate as a videographer and I think that other videographers would also appreciate 4K at higher frame rates is just, it's nice to have slow motion and all that. All those slow motion is sometimes overused. You gotta find that balance between there. Stabilization, 6K as a bonus, potentially. And with all that being said, ye, and I cannot stress this enough, ha. I'll see you guys later. Make sure to like and subscribe and click the notification button if you're not already notified to my uploads. See you guys later. Thank you.